Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. This is game two of our second BO3 in this uh, set of three best of threes, potentially. It's EG versus Cloud9. EG looked dominant in game one, made very few mistakes. Cloud9 had a good early start, couldn't convert, and now, well, they might have to go to a final deciding series should they fail to take this game. I'm LD, I'm joined here by Winter and Fogged, and the draft has begun for game number two, so we're ready. We're gonna hop into it now, and we'll see what the teams have prepared for us. And a hero that you guys talked a lot about, Fogged, I believe it was um, you and who stole it from you? Was it Misery? Rasmus, yes. Yeah. Rasmus stole it from you. It's a hero that you guys both felt was very strong, and Cloud9 agree. They're going to remove it in the first phase. Yeah. because uh, I didn't see like that I coming, though. It was Radiant, because EG is on Radiant. EG on Radiant always tries to push, and Jack Hero is the hero that they go for most of in the past few games on Radiant. Yeah, that's a good point. They put it, I've seen, I think I saw them put it in like all three lanes. They put they had it like short lane support one game, then they had it uh, dual lane mid another game, and then they had Universe on it in the off lane yeah, with another hero, I think. Was, yeah, he was everywhere, basically. And EG will... They really like Sven. They love the Sven versus DP. Oh, uh, and Doom. You know, you get the armor, the first armor. <laughs> Yeah, that's definitely what he's going for. Yeah, <laughs> Doom, Doom needs armor, man. That'll help him out. Yeah, well, that's. I mean, I mean, I never agree with leaving Doom. I think the hero is actually just insanely difficult to deal with. So, so to you, he's still very much first phase worthy. Yeah, I mean, it just the power. It's not even just the Doom. Of course, Doom is insane, but. He's his tanky aspect with the Scorcher, the Scorcher just devour, bringing you back into games. And then even if you, th just every single one of his abilities are so useful. Yeah, level death isn't that amazing generally, really but is. sometimes it late really game is. it can be. It really is. Man. It's so OP, man. Yeah. It's twenty five percent of your max health. What twenty percent? Twenty percent. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, I mean compared Dang. to his other abilities, I feel like it pales, but it's still very strong. I mean, I, yeah, I mean, I can agree with you there. Like, later on in the game, the level death, you see, like, a level death do, like, 800 damage, and you're like, ah. Oh. Yeah, that's, that is a fair it's, point. It's like a mana burn. You mana burn some Storm, they game or think of OD. Yeah, and the cooldown is so, so low. Eight seconds on a, what, 800 damage nuke, basically. <laughs> it is, but anyway. it is good. And, well, the Lich will be banned by Cloud9 in the second stage, so... They saw EG use this effectively in the first game, and mostly we talked about it for the armor, but... Also for the Chain Frost to cancel Black Hole, so two reasons yeah, to, was, to ban that. that. PPD really just crucial. every time he was the one who canceled Black Hole in the late game. He uh, was on yeah, point. He, he, he was very in position. He was so the only thing that could, I mean, he knew he that was the only thing he needed to do in the fight so that they, they would win the fight. Armor, teammates, and then sit there and click Chain so, Frost on the hole. <laughs> yeah, I guess they're gonna ban Dazzle maybe now? Oh no, they're gonna ban Sanky. Evil geniuses. Well, they, they're they a bit worried about EG having such initiation. It seemed like with the Sven and the Sand King, they were just they were too good at getting the jump on Cloud9. Still, Doom Sven is a, a pretty comparable duo in terms of their initiation power. And now EG working on their, their final ban here. In this phase. What do you what do you guys think for Cloud9? Dire Side, Enigma Death Prophet, obviously they want to go for Roche fairly early. And I guess the main question is, like, what do they follow this up with? They they need a kind of laning support, most likely, and looking for an off laner still. Anything in particular you have your eyes on for them? Who's this for? Uh, for Cloud9. Cloud9. Uh, I mean... Rage King, maybe. <laughs> versus Doom, yeah. Yeah, I like Rage King versus Doom. I mean, with the heroes that they have already, I don't see why they wouldn't really go Fury on. Well, it's quite good with these heroes as well. He was ignored yeah, in game would, one, right? That would be right? a lot of push. That would be a lot of push with Puran. It's yeah, a little didn't... greedy, I guess. They have like, eh, it's okay. It does mean they're a bit relying on the black hole for for team fights, though. Not not really any lockdown aside from that. Yeah, and during the in, during the talk just now, you, I think it was uh, quite well. I said Feta should be on a hero that tempo controls would be better for C9 instead of a DP. Yeah, that's a really good point. I can agree with that too. I'm just I'm confused to see C9 just opening up with the same heroes when they had what? How long did they had like a full day almost to prepare for this, and they only need to win one best of three, and we're not seeing any uh, pocket strat. Hmm. Quite shocked by that, honestly. I mean, I guess the the one thing is they're on the other side now. They're on the dire, and mm -hmm. they do have a really good Roche lineup already. So maybe yeah, they I feel mean, like this draft is just that strong on dire that it doesn't matter. 
Yeah, it's really, really strong and dire. I mean, Midnight Pulse and everything, breaking the high ground and dire is huge. And then, of course, the Roshan advantage. But yeah, it is a little surprising. And especially because C9 is a team that's known for having really unorthodox strats. We saw the Meepo play at TI, which was very effective. They don't have Sing Sing now. And do, I don't, do any of them really play can, Meepo? Can they still do that now? Is that still viable? Like, do, do you guys still think that's a strong strat? Or was that just catching people off guard and mostly strong for the element of surprise? I mean, I think it's viable, but maybe not against Sven, the Cleave, or Ember Spirit, something along those lines. Yeah. Sven's kind of pretty good yeah, with you that. Yeah, you can't do <laughs> much against Sven with the Meepo. <laughs> they all start clustering around him and he just cleaves them all down. And eventually he can just kill all five Meepos if he, if he gets enough farm. Yeah. Well, EG, have their off laner here most likely in the Doom, and probably, I mean, they could run him in a side lane, and they'll actually go for an Atreus oh, Prophet. The Prophet. We saw Arteezy's Prophet yesterday, so I'm actually uh, thinking he'll be the one is, to play this. Is this like the same? Yeah, I think it's the same, right? Because you put Universe on the Doom, and you put Fear on the Sand, and you put Prophet on middle lane. Yeah, is I, I agree. Or, is that the plan, or they just want to be greedy, since enemy has a jungling enigma? <laughs> The other option is the four position Doom. Winter, I know you're you're pretty skeptical on it. You just you yeah, think it's it too weak in the like, laning stage. Man, even in pubs when you have a teammate that does that, the game is so tough. Oh, but that's well, so but different, that's different in Those pubs. Pub guys. <laughs> Those pub guys for me are always so legendary. My guy always gets like boots and then he gets a Ursa creep and gets first blood and I'm like, this Doom owns. <laughs> <laughs> I, I Yanni, so I think you're in like the one percent that have had that experience. <laughs> that happens like every game. <laughs> My Doom experience is he just gets a Midas, and then he wants to farm his next three items before he uses his ult. All right, well, you're in potato bracket. Yeah, right. that's true. <laughs> it happens in high-level play, too, in pubs. Uh, I'm, I'm just messing with Damn. You. Those flames, man. Cut me <laughs> and deep. And they do go for Beastmaster here, too. So they've got a... Uh, they push really down. hard yeah, right now. Yeah, this, this is really, like, everything is, like, targeted at the Sven, you know? <laughs> the Rahal, the Black Hole, everything. They do get better control for him. Like, having, having Roar, as well as the Boar Slow... That what? is a lot, and they're going to pick the Tinker, so EG are going to try to show Cloud9 that they know how to use it better. Mm, Almost a slap have, in the face. They have Prophet to T- like, they have Prophet's Treants to TP around with the Tinker. It might be interesting. Is there- is this also just like a block pick? Because they're worried about Cloud9 being able to use the Beastmaster-Tinker combo. We've seen that a lot from Fnatic before they broke up, when they had Excalibur on the team, and it seemed very strong when they were doing it. Ten seconds. Uh, they might have just wanted it for themselves, like... Yeah. yeah, I don't know, man. It's, it, it's, their it's fine. Okay. Batrider from okay. Cloud9. This is the anti-Tinker, anti-Prophet, anti-Sven pick. With the Bat and the Hawk on the Beastmaster, Cloud9 so, are going to have pretty uh, decent control so for the Tinker. So are going to put Feta on the Beastmaster, and then Bone7 on Bat, and then Envy on the Death Prophet? Is that the... I, I guess I'm so. Come lost, man. I'm done. <laughs> Even EG's heroes, like I'm, I'm curious as to where they're gonna, how they're gonna lane this already. Yeah, like, support Sven. Maybe it's just a support Sven. This is a yeah. I mean, that's maybe they'll just jungle the Doom, like and just have like Fear on Doom, and then like Zai is on Sven shortly, and then like Doom transitions afterwards, and they, I don't know. Yeah, like they give the Sven a few levels, farms, farms his boots, and then goes gank with the other support. Whichever it is, and Doom takes the lane. Maybe the yeah, because the big thing I think, uh, the big thing I notice about this for, for EG at least is like Arteezy plays the tanker, Universe plays the Furion, Doom and I think is mostly fear, Zai. but oh. Zai I guess very rarely as well. But then there's that Sven there too. Hmm. Yeah, the Sven has to be the downgrade position here. Yeah, he has to be the support right in this. Dude, scenario. maybe fear tanker. Fear was actually <laughs> practicing it a lot in his pubs like uh three weeks ago. I think it, yeah, it's a good hero to limber up on if you if you want to work wow, on your mechanics. Okay. Oh, nice. Cloud9 uh, get their Warlock sniped! Hell yeah. I w dude, I'm telling you, this support hero is so good. Like, if you just get the Fatal... You just ignore Fatal Bonds for the most part. You can get it later on, maybe, but and having the heal and upheaval is just... And they also get another way to cancel actually, the Black Hole as well. Yeah, that's actually a very good way to cancel. I was gonna say that. Cancel the Black Hole. That is... Yeah. Like, like the range with a golem is just ridiculous. Man, no, nothing you can get to stop that, apart from you just kill the warlock first, but 
What? Okay, this is a sad okay, tinker. Okay, what's going on? Where's the support hero? Where's the support <laughs> it's hero? It's a support, no support beastmaster. The There's actually zero support. There's zero, like, true supports, okay, yeah. Okay, well, Warlock, Warlock is, is the, the closest. No, Warlock, Warlock counts. <laughs> okay, Warlock counts. But that hero doesn't need anything. That hero legit needs, like, tranquil boots and you're good to go. Yeah, we've uh, seen the support beastmaster, God. though. Normally it's a four position, not a, not a five. What's gonna go on with the lane? So it's gonna be a beastmaster running around trying to stack ancients or trying to stack the new shows for bad rider, and then the lane will be like some spectre soul against doom. Oh, uh, that doesn't sound that fun. That doesn't. That doesn't sound good, man. <laughs> you know what's so weird is that like I'm looking and I'm like, man, Venge looks amazing versus EG. Got banned. Like, Enigma. Banned. Oh, it was banned. Okay. I was like, yeah. there's a bat yeah. rider and an Enigma. Like, Five, six, all right, I'm zoned out. My coffee is Man. not working. You need you need to start <laughs> chugging it, not sipping it. I think I need another oh, beer bag. What's going on? <laughs> oh boy, Nature's Prophet and Tinker against the Spectre. I, I mean, this is this is a lineup that can punish the the global picks though. You you look at right. C9, the Hawk, the Haunt, the Lasso. They've got a lot of ways to find Tinker on the map. So uh, this is what I was gonna say. I was gonna be. I was gonna say I'm interested to see how they're gonna end up laning this with yeah, for C9, the but they're actually the doing dual problem. lane. It looks like a Beastmaster really? Batrider dual lane, though. That's actually pretty decent. Uh, this is something I did try before in very long ago in Dota 1. It's actually pretty decent because the boss slow plus the napalm, you can actually have quite a decent killing power. But that's before you hit level, like, until but, you hit level 3. But Beastmaster overall, is, he's, he's, he stands up very well on his own. He does a shitload of damage at level 1. Yeah, a lot of armor, a lot of HP. Yeah, and axes do a good amount, etc. No, everybody uh, needs uh, farming levels this game, I'm, boys. I'm just worried about... <laughs> You know, the one thing I'm worried about C9 is like, the, what is the Spectre gonna do in the lane? Look at his items, he's only gonna have one tool tango and a poor man shoot. And he has... And he's got an Enigma and Beastmaster no to support, support. him. No support, no yeah. Unless the Enigma somehow tries to be a leech, you know, in the lane. And Fad is going a little crazy as Dota 2 is giving them some problems here, but... Yeah, this is... Obviously the Spectre will be good if he can somehow get through the laning stage intact. But... The question is, Kenny, it's gonna be tough. Look, look at EG's lanes as well. Zai is gonna go top. Is he gonna go top? And Fear will be top with him, and Prophet will be bottom. Or they're just gonna try lane with Warlock. For now, they want to get into the C9 jungle, it looks like, and slow down the Enigma. Arteezy's leading the way, and on that note, we introduce the teams. You've got EG leading 1-0 in the first best of three, or well, actually the second. Cloud9 got one with the winner bracket advantage. Zai will be playing your Doom, PPD the Warlock, Arteezy the Tinker, Behind him, Fear will be playing the Sven, and last but not least, is your Nature's Prophet for Universe. And this Enigma it will have his jungle completely taken over. We've seen we've seen often uh, EG will respond to this by just trying to send the the Enigma to the off lane in front of the Ancients if they feel like it's not safe to be in the woods. But yeah, with that being said, we introduce Cloud Nine, Eternal Envy on the Spectre this time around, AUI 2000 once again, reprising his role as the Enigma, Fada on the DP mid once again, the Death Prophet, Pile Die on the support Beastmaster, and. At least Bone 7 on a hero that he's done some pioneer work for in the past on the Batrider. He's going to need to do a lot of work this game. I'm just wondering if Aoi would actually do more in the lane this game to help the Spectre instead of just being his normal AFK farming role on the Enigma. He denied the short lane this game. Yeah, I mean, he needs to, definitely needs to help Envy. He has just one tangle. He needs to make sure that he has a good time. Look, I'm t I, I, the Xai is gonna go for an, like a, a early creep, and then with a fierce stun, they're gonna kill him. An Ursa creep. And maybe he's gonna block with the illusions the next camp, and then he just devours <laughs> that camp, leaving the small creep. And just maybe, yeah. So three jungle. camps denied. It looks like that oh might be God. the plan. No, I think he's just gonna block all three camps and just hit over to devour the next. Oh no, I think that's he can block, take. Right? He yeah. can take this away from AUI 2000. Oh yeah. This that's a triple camp denied by Xai <laughs> off the bat. That is one sad enigma. It yeah. is one side of him. Just look at the Spectre. What is Ami gonna do here? What is he gonna do against the Warlock and the Sven? He's gonna pull. But even PP2 won't even let him have this without a fight. Can't even get the pull off. He's too late to it and can prevent any stacking here. And Zai just funny. casually fighting AUI 2000 at level 1 with the summon skeletons. Though the yeah, conversions will end this. Send out one set of tangles for himself, but I'm not sure, man. I, I think this factor is going to have very, very little CS in the first 10 minutes. So, so if they can't win those lanes, which or the the jungle and the top lane, then they've got to win mid and bottom. And well, what do you guys think their chances are looking at those lanes? They'll probably win bottom, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they'll win bottom, but it doesn't even accomplish anything. Because and if anything, he can just TP out at any time. 
Because they, they have to skill Flame Break, and he's not going to do that. I mean, we'll stun it. Eternal Army getting stunned by Fear top lane, but won't actually have mana for a follow-up one if they want to go in later. And now he's ditching his jungle. I guess the best move here is he just straight away goes behind the creep, take away the wave, and just try to push the tower. And then the Prophet will probably try to do the same and TP top. Zai wants to exchange, uh, exchange T1s. So I wanted to go in mid. There's Bone 7 and Pilot. I really get aggressive uh, on Universe. Here comes the Warlock. I'm trying to bring Seems in some so reinforcements here. Zai making that trek all the way from the Dire Jungle down to bottom. Warlock, as you mentioned, Winter, arriving here too. And I'll try and force Cloud9's aggressive dual lane. Now be quickly becoming a tri lane. Back okay. off. And Envy's gonna be able to farm against one Sven. That's good news. <laughs> this, this, what is this Dota? There's like four heroes. Not even attempting for kills, just casually this, fighting over experience in the this jungle. Is, this is bad influence, you know? Like everyone would pick no supports after this. Yeah, this I is don't a... like this. I don't like this Dota right now. I'm not really. I don't know. I'm just sitting here quietly, like just like lost, even. <laughs> it's it's like who can have the the weakest possible lanes ever. I think I think for now C9 have won that battle, but they'll need to look they'll need this. to return. Just look at this, LD. They see Awe running back to the top jungle, and here comes Zai. I'm following you, dude. Yeah, they had that observer ward. The first one here that spots him when he starts and... moving, and then. This one, like, if he if he rotates jungles, they're always gonna see his movement. Yeah, just look at Zai. He's just gonna be a total prick following the Enigma the whole time. If the enemy Doom is keeping up in levels with your Enigma, you know you're having a bad time. And they're not winning elsewhere. Arteezy's doing well mid against the Death Prophet, breaking even, but ha off to a pretty good start with five CS submitted. And mm. the big thing is Eternal Envy struggling top lane mightily. They need to get at least one kill at bottom with this Bat Rider and. Beastmaster somehow. When Beast, Beastmaster has level 3, so he has that ball to slow down, and with the combine with the Napalm, they can actually kill PPD. Yeah. Warlock does have one point in Shadow Word, as we see Zai getting aggressive on the AUI 2000. Just and trying to be a nuisance in the jungle, but a fresh set of conversions will end this. He'll have to back. Yeah, he's still screwing him over pretty hard, though. AUI's getting little to no farm. Yeah, he was just chilling here, had the ward to give him vision and leeching experience, so... You know, this Doom feels like a bounty hunter. Yeah, he does. Yeah, except he gets a lot more gold early on. This is something I saw, like, people picking, like, Enchantress and Chen. Oh, like, other PPD, people just picking Doom. PPD's this could be our first blood. Bone 7 on the chase. The boar is there. there Sticky is. Napalm falling up, and, well, exactly like you predicted. They'll get the first blood, perhaps. Oh, well, they do. The <laughs> trade's people, attempted. Gonna save you, bro. <laughs> Prophet even forced to TP in for this, and now Universe, the Sticky Napalm stacking up on him, but oh, the Firefly's about to end. And now Sai a fresh really, illusion this is rune. really what they needed. Look at so this. Badly. Look at this. The Enigma. He's up against a fresh Doom illusion. AI 2000 is losing this battle for control of his woods against a Doom. Man, Sai's got. I heard he. He's out leveling him now. He's level he's four. He's got arcane boots if he wants them already. <laughs> K Pop so Toast has just pointed out nine heroes of ten last hits this game. <laughs> Everyone is farming in the, really in the game of no supports. Yeah, uh, and the person who got first blood is the one that has the lowest CS. <laughs> There's only one support in this game, and he's the feeder, at least for now. Oh, mid lane. But they definitely needed that kill. As Bone Seven and Fado will pursue Zai a bit. <laughs> Zai with the casual run in and hit Fado once as Doom. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. He's finally gonna leave AUI 2000 alone, but the damage was done. Like at this point, AUI would be level seven if he's left alone. He's level three. Did he get a tranquil boost? What did he buy? Oh no, he actually bought nothing. Is he... Is this arcane. an arcane mech game? You think? Maybe he just oh. rushes Midas. I, I don't know. Yeah, actually Midas would be a good... Like, because C9's heroes are gonna go late, so you wanna make sure that your Doom is gonna be very farm, so you have four heroes. Four cores. <laughs> and in this top lane, Eternal Envy, he's been... He's been worried, perhaps, about rotations, but Fear has just been crushing him in CS. 32 and 12 already. And to be fair, if you had so much help in the first few waves. Yeah. This is, yeah, they're actually doing the boar plus the bat rider. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cute. So sick. It's cute, That's but Arteezy does have to walk into it. It's not like they can just dive him from afar. No oh, blink dagger. Oh, he might. Like that first boar slows there, and now the haunt comes in. And a t PPD needs to turn this with an upheaval, but I think it's too late anyway. He'll try to channel it, and he He's will drop die. for this as well. Chased down and killed off by Cloud9. The turn may come, though, as I rotates in. He chooses to go after Fada, but Fada's pretty mobile here with the boots up as yes, well as... Boots and he did go Tranquils. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he's gonna be very fast. 
Oh, he does have a nuke. He's got a shockwave, but he needs someone else to join him in. Yeah, he's chasing Envy. They're not really well coordinated here, but oh, they are with the profit ult. They get that. Oh, kill. that's what they were waiting. That's why he was chasing him down. Okay, that makes yeah, sense. I was like, why is it, what's I doing? Yeah, it's like, uh, they're just not going to get either kill. But with the profit ult, they almost got two. But now the bottle will come and Fada's going to heal right back up Tyler, to full. Tyler has his ultimate up. I think this will and be look it. at this. Like, it's so interesting, like, in this type of game, too. Like, look at Universe's items now. He's going for a full blown rush mech with nothing else. So I guess that means the Doom uh, will be going Midas next. Or maybe even just a straight blink. Probably, yeah, I think Midas would, would be a good choice as well if he wants to go for it. The game would be definitely a long game. Well, that's what that's what both teams are hoping for, honestly. Like, I'm not sure who would rather go late. You've got really strong yeah, late game Binker lineups. And Doom. Why do you worry about going late? <laughs> it's a Spectre, Death Prophet, Enigma, Batrider. Like, that's pretty good late game on Doom Cloud9 that. as well. I'm more, I think I'm more scared of EGs. Yeah? Okay. Yeah, I think so. Just I mean, do Doom. Especially yeah, with the way the man. lanes are developing. Like, this yeah. Spectre is getting nothing. I mean, Doom is just incredible, and then they have the way to stop the whole... And then a Beastmaster support, he's not going to get anything. I mean, I guess he's not really being a support, though. He's kind of... I don't even know. He's got... Like, they he's, might he's got his ult. They might actually try to kill Top soon when the Prophet has ultimate. I'll I just give up actually, on. They can potentially try to kill the Spectre with maybe one Prophet rotation to top. 10 seconds to his TP and ultimate soon. Yeah, and AUI actually just got his 6 as well, finally. Finally. <laughs> yeah, I mean, considering the, the way the Doom dealt with them early game, it's about as good as you could expect. They're gonna smoke. Yeah. I think they're gonna smoke. Yeah, they're gonna smoke now. Q top, probably, help the Spectre at least, at least farm something. This needs to work. Fear is getting a lot out of this lane and... And he knows, I think he's playing very safe. Oh, he's gonna go up. Right oh, yeah. as they leave, just unfortunate timing for C9. Here's the smoke. They see they see RTZ with the hawk just now. They know he's hiding in the trees there. And he's just hawk. close enough potentially for this wraparound to get him killed, but he heads uh, to the. He's, oh, he oh, be oh, oh. So he's too too far. Now Eternal Envy comes in and with the roar they'll get that kill. They could black hole this hero that's black TPing hole? in, looking for fear, not using the black hole yet. He'll actually get stunned and. Do they still engage? I think they're too low with the Nature's Prophet ult. Fear, still alive while Fada gets pursued to the south side of the fight. Tries to TP out. On the same time, Pylidai also making his retreat. The TP will be successful. And it looked like there'd be three heroes dying there, but in the end, they only the Tinker goes down. Everyone on Cloud9 lives. Mm, I think Cloud9 would be happy about for that. Enemies finally gotten some space to farm. And the one thing for EG is, this Warlock Rock is a while off, but they're still trying to apply pressure without it. Mech ready on universe, no mana to use it though. That may give them a, a scare as far as keeping this aggression up goes. Yeah, I don't think they can actually push without mana. They need to go back and yeah, he's going for a Midas on Doom. Tranquils into Midas. Yeah, so the Prophet will get them through the laning stage. They've got the Tinker and the Doom to take it late and... Well, Warlock once he gets his ult, EG will okay. probably look for another wave of aggression. They have every, every single hero. He's gonna do well in late game. I mean, even Warlock does well with the Fatal Bonds late game. I mean... Uh, <laughs> and Paper, I agree. Although, if he needs oh, really PPD. struggling here to Fada, he'll just get run down by a double yeah, Crips one and right clicks. Bot. The Vault behind the tower sees him. Yeah, yeah PP's like, alright, I'm, I'm fogged it's, now, I'm fine. He's like the 9 roll. This is the 9 roll Warlock. <laughs> That's, seriously, he's got 450 net worth. Now 350 after that death. The TP yeah, scroll is his uh, most valuable item. And we're 10 minutes in. Who is the 10th row in this game, if he's 9, that's 10 heroes? No, there's there's multiple, there's a lot of 3s in this game, I feel. Yeah, I think they have like, it's like, it's like 8 3s, a 9, <laughs> and then maybe a 1. Maybe there's a 1 around there. single I 1. I guess Vada. The Tinker has to be a 1, maybe? Yeah, he's, he's, Arteezy is having an okay time. The Death Prophet is out farming yeah. him for now, but that will change eventually. And if you're C9 right now, you are still working on mech for AUI 2000. They're wrapping oh, around the top lane. Okay. They want to find the fear with this. And with have, Black Hole still in line, they could go for it. Yeah, they have a haste on Batrider. This is this is actually a good timing. If they want to try and push up this wave and try to look for a pick off with the haste. Or maybe he's just trying to keep the haste till he gets the blink. The double boars are prowling. Pylai die. He'll run into Treants with a little kerfluffle in the jungle. And he'll probably get some extra gold from this, though they are despawning soon. and. You see EG just really focused on economy at this point. Stacking up the Ancients, trying to get the, the Dooms farm up with the Midas. Oh, Paladai. He should be dead. Oh no, he has, walk. He has the Axe to stop the Sprout. Yeah, he'll Axe his way out, but there is still a Doom 
online. Unfortunately, they don't have any way to get in range. Prophet could TP his... in, but actually already used upheaval. it. He cast his upheaval. He trying to... So, uh, the four cores of EG are all about the same net worth. <laughs> <laughs> Three of the and Cloud9 PP... cores oh, are... And then PPD has 160 net worth. What? <laughs> Everybody's above backwards. 2k and, and PPD is at 175. Man, even the Beastmaster has 2000 net worth. So C9 doesn't have a support, technically. This is actually unbelievable. I've never seen a hero poorer than this at 12 minutes in. Maybe, maybe just but why is the Beastmaster? Why is the Beastmaster having so much net worth? I don't understand. Uh, he's been farming. Bat, he like farmed bottom for a while. Bat was like running around chasing kills, remember? With the boar. So he like oh, left he him in the lane solo. Yeah, oh, eternal envy. Velocity. You don't want to be here. Stunned and then doom top lane. He's definitely going down. Might be denied though. The nature's profit ult will prevent that. Nice. And AUI 2000 now looks for a black hole. There's nothing to cancel this. Doom doesn't have a point in level death yet and it will connect wow. on two. Fear and Zai run back into it. Big kills for Cloud9. They'll lose both. Now trying oh, to retreat to, to the tower. Someone else to lasso. Oh, no. They've got PPD. the lasso. Oh no. It's going to be a three for nil. PPD. I don't think he can lose any more net worth so. In that sense, it's an acceptable loss. Nothing of value was lost. You're, you're At so this mean. point, five branches. <laughs> I think he just lost like five gold or something, or he didn't even lose any. Network. It was about a hundred, like hundred net worth loss there. Basically nothing. Me. This might be too greedy. I mean, you guys thought Cloud9 was too greedy, but it seems now EG might be the too greedy lineup. And the, the tower will the get reach. pushed. They're gonna get two towers on the back of this, not just the kills, but the map control for this tinker is quickly evaporating. Now the ancients aren't very safe to farm. They they still have that great lane war between the tier two and tier one mid. And yeah, they, it's and, not and safe to go out up. on the map. They have Anyone horn up on Spectre. And Spectre went for Urn. I, I like this build a lot on the Spectre. Yeah, the Urn is really strong. Can you actually ask uh, K pop if that's the lowest net worth? I think it might be, dude. It's gotta be. It's gotta be close. He's looking it up now, I think. Trying to get us the those crucial stats. That's things, because it's it's strange because the PPD is actually like oh envy and they're getting gates on mid. Oh, they jump on envy again with the nature's profit ult. Continue to pursue him outside. Needs a few, little bit more damage. The sprout will get to connect from oh, long range, but the mech, the mech the mech saves him. AOI 2000 bails out his buddy, and now they look for the turn. Well, in the end, both that, teams will back off. That time, the medical assistant. That was like <laughs> he like redlined and <laughs> they resuscitated him anyway. No, I, what I was gonna say too is that PPD is one of those players that, uh, like, a lot of people overlook. He does a lot of big things with very, very little to no farm, with his heroes. But I think this might, this time might be a little bit too low. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I, no, I think he's still gonna do something really big. Oh like, no, of course. The black, the black hole of this game. Yeah, it definitely. Doesn't require him to have anything. Well, he would like boots at this point in the game, which he's <laughs> almost got a hundred gold off of those. Does he even need them? Yeah, he has boots now. Does he? We'll see. Yeah, Will he, he does. So, Will so, he buy them though? Ah. Uh, All right. Well, that's... I don't think he's gonna buy. I approve of this boots purchase. He buys a bracer, dude. <laughs> Next levels you. Yeah, uh, I, I can feel the boots here. He's also got ulti, and that's something that EG have been lacking is that that uh, additional comes, team fight control. Here comes Bone yeah. Seven and Pilotai, the gang. Really nice. Haste really from nice bottle up. Let's see if they jump in mid lane. EG grouping up with Arteezy here. A bit worried about the Batrider jumps. And with the haste, they can pull someone really far out of position if EG aren't careful. Envy actually found a lot more farm than I thought he'd have. Hmm. He doesn't really look like much, but... I, I just realized he's actually doing about the same as the Enigma. Huh, that's actually really good. Smoke from EG. They're going to make their move up the mid and then wrap around towards two heroes who oh, are waiting. Oh, Fada oh. and AUI are in an awkward predicament. Zai can Doom. He'll throw it out on Fada, but he's still quite mobile with the face boots having been used before the Doom. Still slowed down and ultimately killed off by the upheaval. No denied. Oh, denied. Really well done by... Really well done in the end by AUI 2000's Enigma, though it may cost him his life. Haunt is now here to counter-initiate, and the turn is attempted at the very least. Spectre looking for fear with a little bit of support from AUI 2000. They get this kill, but AUI might be the trade. No, the black hole! It's enough to keep him alive. The two-for-one exchange as Bone7 hunts for the third. Lasso already been used, though, and going to be wow. difficult to chase this one um, down. Oh, he's AUI is player. actually playing his mind out, ahead of his mind. Yeah, right saved the, the, mech, the mech save in the middle, then he denies the guy right afterwards, and then he ends up getting that hole off on Sven and living. Yeah, okay. if he didn't get it off, he would have died. For sure. Sven would have been able to get the last right click. Oh. By he's the way, PPD's really upheaval well did some work there. That Death Prophet was running really fast until the slow oh, kicked in. Lane. 
gonna chase? Nah, it's not gonna. Just wondering how, how could he possibly even get the kill. C9 look towards Roche now. They've got the level 2 exorcism and as well as the max witchcraft, so this will drop quickly. So let Eternal Envy tank it and. Oh. Don't really see EG contesting this. Mm. The rock is online. PPD I, does I think move he that goes way. goes for the diffuser build, right? This game for the rock. On, the on which one? On Spectre. Um, Probably. Diffuser. I don't see why he wouldn't. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, do they really need it though? I mean, like Death Prophet ult kills the golem really quickly as well. Yeah, the radiance is always really. Strong. Oh, and Beastmaster actually has it. Diffusal. Oh my God. That's, a, like, really that's, soon. that's so much farm for this stage of the game. I don't know, man. I just clicked on him and I was like, wait, what is, it, what is his items? And I see, like, alacrity and I'm like, oh. Alright. Yeah, this is this is going to be a fairly useless Warlock unless... Uh, you still get the stun, I suppose. So I'm you can still cancel healer. the Black Hole. Up you will. You're not useless. Up you will. We're breaking records all over, though. Like, lowest net worth Warlock. Uh, the first defusal on Beastmaster ever. First zero support in the game ever. This, like, almost reminds me, I mean, not in terms of the level of play, but just in terms of the strangeness of the game, of, like, when the Korean Dota League first started, where you just see the most random things. You're like, what is this Dota? But it's happening in a major match at a, a big land finals here, just after TI4. Yeah. Crazy things. This is before 6.82 as well. <laughs> That's when we'll really see some new strategies, but the teams I are so still excited. doing it anyway. Yeah, and Doom is building into a Vlad small armor for his team. Hmm. Nice first the DP ult. We've seen EG yeah. really prioritize armor against Death Prophet. Oh, here they go. They might actually catch our Fanta here. There's Doom. no Blink Dagger on Fear, but Zai can uh -huh. try to run him down with the Scorched Earth. Unable to do it. Maybe if they pop the Drum Charge, they would have been able to chase up. I'm not now sure. the counter initiation from the Haunt. Dagger? Is oh, there PPD. any engagement here? Oh, they actually okay. will find PPD. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, poor PPD. They have a blink dagger as well, and Bone7 leaps oh, in. He no. actually blasts those Zion, pulls him directly back into the rest of the Cloud9 squad. Doom is available, but he's not using it yet. He stomps and doesn't throw it out, deciding that he'll save it for the next fight. There's no way they take this one anyway. While Fada yeah. continues pursuit, forcing Fear back to the base. How is... Let me ask you a question. How is Fear's second lowest net worth of the game? I don't know. He had a good laning phase. He was like the lead CS at that point. What? What is going on? He's one I, and two. Like I said, man. I'm just gonna sip my coffee. Wake up a little bit. Maybe I'm hallucinating. <laughs> this is all just a dream. A bad no, dream. Man. If you're EG. Support Beastmaster has more net worth than the Sven. He really does. No idea. No idea what's going that on. Has, that's Towers and Roche. Come on. Yeah, okay. <sighs> but I still can't... He's got nine assists. It's not It's so not just poor. Towers and Roche. Yeah, but, but oh, Fear is just way too poor. No. Seems like he had a so good, such a good start. Well, can can Tinker carry them back from the grave here, guys? Do, what what do you rate their chances at this point? Six percent. Yeah, it's very low already. They almost lost the whole game already at this point. That was a very specific number to choose. Mm -hmm. Six percent. Okay, I'll just give like a one percent more because it's a Tinker. So. <laughs> Instead of the standard five. It's... What? No, man. It would have been like a ten percent, but the diffusals minus is another four percent. Come on. <laughs> But they have a Midas on the Doom. Soon. They have a Midas on Doom. So that somehow increases their chances a bit. Yeah, but then at the same time, Universe is going utility. So like it brings it down a little bit for me. I don't know, man. Yeah, it doesn't have that much play <laughs> game power. <laughs> you, A lot of thought went into that 6%, guys. I'm, I'm serious. Yannis is not, totally not talking out of his ass with that. <laughs> He's got it. Indeed, a, the first Admiral Diffusal. Nice. It's a really smart item pick up this game. and It's nice as well because it frees up the Spectre to go for something bigger. Like straight into the Manta. Maybe yeah, into a, a radiance, the radiance as they look for the lasso here, and it will be Arteezy who's caught. Couldn't go to farm the ancients. He needs okay, that gold. There, there goes another one percent. <laughs> to be yeah, five percent now. I mean, like to be totally honest with you, I think this defusal pickup wasn't really the best. I don't really understand the purpose. They're gonna be so strong that they're gonna be able to two shot the golem. The whole point of the golem really is to stop the black hole once the BKB is there. Could be but a blink dagger instead, I suppose. Probably just get an axe on a beastmaster instead of. It could just beast. be an axe, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Even a even necro a book wouldn't even be even bad. A necro book, yeah, I was thinking. Necro book, Vlad's, uh, like all these items would have been fine in my opinion. They're just enjoying the the luxury of being so far ahead that like it could be anything, and it probably but, wouldn't I mean, matter. At, at the same time, like n diffusal is an amazing item if you can get it on any support ever. So I will never bash talk a diffusal. Yeah, it does it does potentially save your roar? Like you can just snare them, and if anyone else is there, you you can reserve it for a more important target. 
And the double slow meet with the boars there is you're not going anywhere. So EG now bottled up pretty thoroughly. Arteezy's the him and Universe on the Nature's Prophet, the only two that can get out of the map, and Universe is TPing oh, directly no. into Fada. Oh, no. TP behind oh, enemy lines, he's like, oh shit, this is not where I want to be. The Sprout actually is perfect until the phase boots allow Fada to run through this. Yes, false and, stuff. And he tries to. Four staff, TP out is their flame break. Oh yeah. He gets pushed down to the low ground the other direction. They'll need that defusal Wrong. blade now. The mech keeps Wrong. him alive. He sprouts Pyline Die away, and Universe is actually what? gonna live. What? I'll uh, he was lucky the bit the bat didn't have mana. Otherwise he would have never lived. Yeah, he um, had lost. So. Completely lost as to why Fada didn't use him that entire duration when he was chasing him. I guess he just thought they had the kill. Yeah. Could've if he just used him at the start, he would have been a for sure kill. Uh, I mean, mistakes were made. I guess. Yeah, it's just small mistakes. That's not even. I mean, that made a little bit of space on the map. It's mostly just highlight worthy in terms of. And he used a defusal charge, so. Yeah, <laughs> they've got that going for them. Yeah, dude. If he had Ags, he would have been able to get the roar there. Just saying. Alright, point made. No need to rub <laughs> it in. You're just being an asshole now. Um, oh, no, it's I'll true. I'll just sip my coffee. Yeah, just, just sip your coffee, Yanni. Well, EG at this point just... I mean, Universe has to go for things like that, though. They can't just sit in the base. Unfortunately, he just chose the wrong time to yeah, PP in. He has to make... Like, he has to farm somewhere that his teammate can't farm. And leave the space that he teammate, his teammate can come, so that they everyone gets a little bit more goal. Like he needs to take a bit more chances, I guess. I just, got, I right. feel like this will just get a, a lot harder and harder for EG though. This the way this game's gonna go out, because uh, Spectre's actually going for the radiance as well. And at, at the point that he gets that, like, you look at the HP pools of these EG heroes. You got. Yeah, I, I am, I'm just worrying for one person when he gets the radiance. You know, worrying about the warlock. <laughs> Not just oh, the yeah. Warlock. Arteezy's got 950 health. He is very um, vulnerable as well. Wow, he actually just has a little bit more health than the Warlock. Yeah, <laughs> he's very squishy. And he's not going to be tanking up either if he goes for the Dagon build. Which I imagine will be the choice. Uh, I'm not sure though. Maybe just go for... Yeah, I don't think he can go for anything else. Even if he goes for the Bloodstone or Shivas, doesn't really help. And the Relic Gold is there for Turtle Envy now. They push in the bottom lane and in the top as well. C9 just, like, you, the area that EG moves out is essentially, I mean, that's even generous. It's often less than that, unless they're four or five. C9 are just one hero pushing the lanes, like, past where the tier two stand top. And Fada's even going high ground, potentially. Yeah, just look at Universe. He's the only person outside. Oh, he's gonna get spotted. Oh dear. Not this time. <laughs> this time, Bone Seven's on the hunt. With the Force Staff, will get him in the lasso range, and then gets pulled back into the axes. They'll even use the raw or Pylite die. Yeah, he hasn't used the raw for such a long time. Like, that feels not? good. It really does. Still not looking oh, for Roshan. Hunt. Bottom lane, they jump in on Fada. Quick reactions by Fear with the stun. Eternal Envy immediately haunts in. He gets stomped by Zai. Then nice. the backup arrives in the firm of AUI 2000. Black Hole's available. He BKBs. He pulls them both back in. The Warlock Golem is there to cancel this. Great reaction by PPD. Forcing AUI 2000 off the fight. Still, though, still though, Eternal Envy stands through this. And they need to finish off the Spectre. Delay the Radiance timing. They'll get the kill. Pi collects the Golem Gold. And now slowly chips away at Arteezy from the high ground. The boar doing a little bit of harassment damage, but they've got no way to stop a TP out. No mana on Bone 7. And That's yeah, something I didn't even consider with the golem that you can TP to it. I didn't even oh, yeah. know you could, actually. I wasn't even thinking about it, honestly. That's really interesting. I think the but, most ridiculous uh, thing is the Astral Spirit. Like, that just yeah, the spirit boggles my mind. Well, that just, that just shouldn't be there, in my opinion. Or even the Panda Spirit. <laughs> that too. That should not be there, either. Those are just silly. Okay, guys, we're not gonna see the tree, the Dagon build from Arteezy. Tree, by the way, LD. Tree for tree. Huh. Yeah, that was a. They managed to pull off an even fight. Somehow. That was, you, you know, like you guys said, PPD. He does a lot with very little farm compared to a lot of supports, and hey, the Rock saved them that fight. Without that, they it definitely was, have it an unfair fight. It was two things there actually from PPD. It was the Rock and that ward that he placed a couple minutes ago, because that ward actually saw Fada coming in. So Spectre ulted, and Fear instantly blinked on top of Fada, and they got the Doom on him. So that could have been an actual terrible scenario in a split second if they didn't do that. Very good point. Yeah, Wards, man. I told you yesterday, Wards wins the games. Wards wins you games. That won them that team fight. They would have gotten yeah, three more. Look at that. The gem. Just, the gem. Screw your Wards, man. I'm buying a gem. 
And C9 have really good D-Ward. Not only do they have the Beastmaster, but they also have and a Bat they, Rider. They have Bat and Beastmaster. You're supposed to be able to have map hack with those two heroes. Well, they just turn the map everything. hack on. Yeah, it's just like having Night Stalker on your team. Eternal Envy is getting close to his Radiance, but it, it's, it's delayed by about two minutes on the back of that death. But as soon as it comes up, you've got to expect that with Boots of Travel and the Bat Rider, Bone 7 is full complement of standard items. The Mask Command is also picked up. They'll be going straight for some ganks after after a potential Roche. You know, after after five ten minutes, if you turn on the network, the network looks, looks a lot more favorable for EG compared to the last ten minutes. It's definitely settled down. Yeah, the Doom and the Tinker caught up a lot. Yeah, I, I do want to point out how good EG have, have been about moving this Tinker around the map. They've been using Treants and send one deep into the Dire Jungle. Arteezy will march just to slow down the push top lane from the Dire Creeps wall. The rest of the team is smoked up and looking for a pickoff. So they're doing a nice job of getting Arteezy safely out on the map. Good play from Universe. I feel like C9 should be seizing the opportunity more to pick some fights with uh, the Spectre ulti more often. Yeah, probably go for Rosh first before they yeah, do anything. Yeah, that's, that's a good point. Waiting for the Rosh, I guess. Maybe they're just waiting for the Radiance before going for them, but he does have it now, Eternal Envy. Yeah, he's... He's not, he's not exactly super fun, but uh, I mean, Radius is all he needs right now. It's again also just about how how much HP EG have. They've got the Doom and Sven who are fairly tanky, but the other three are very squishy. That's, that's one thing I want to say, you know. Are you sure you want to give the Aegis to the Spectre now, instead of the DP? Batrider wants to jump this, they're haunting, taunting in to initiate, and PPD is the one who gets caught out. Eternal Envy daggering him, then chasing him, while they lasso Zion, keep him in position to the right side of the fight. Looks like they're going to lose both. The Warlock will drop, and simultaneously Zion also falling, not denied by the neutrals. Almost looked like EG would get out in time there, because the Bats blinking didn't connect with the lasso, but just too much follow-up chase. The Radiant Spectre is actually just so damn good versus EG's lineup as well. Like oh. the bl stopping that Doom's yeah, blink all the, and the Tinkers. All the, blink all the blinks are so important. They're, they might lose Universe here as well. It looks like it's going to be three heroes down. Flamebake already thrown. He could try for a TP out, but thought it would be there to cancel it. And Fear is arriving to turn this one. Can he finish off Bone 7? One more right click does the trick. They end up getting oh, the kill. He didn't, he didn't get the mech on time though. I think there was a chance that he could have mech him. <laughs> Bone 7 bought a recipe for Lincoln Sphere while he was dying. <laughs> At least he got that. Yeah. That's a... Interesting pickup, not going for a BKB. Just get rid of that. Oh, dude. Universe. And Universe can even TP out in time against oh, Eternal Envy's bonus die. damage. No chance. Oh, he's gonna die. Man, that burst damage from Spectre. The Urn, the Urn charge and the Radiance burn. It's actually kind of ridiculous how hard he's hitting right now. Because it's not even that fast of a Radiance. Like yeah, he... It's all the desolate damage there. This is concerning for EG. And also, when he gets off the haunt, their initiation's just gone. They, they've got a Sven with the blink, a Doom with the blink, and neither is going to be able to start the fights if Spectre haunts first. And yeah, C9 even pushing the, Tinker, the bottom lane. Even the Tinker gets spotted out immediately. Well, guys, looks like C9's going to try to take this tier two. Oh, top lane, top oh, lane. Oh, seven. Hex. That's the second oh, death that for is, Bone Seven in a no, short amount of really, time. That's a really good pick off. They're gonna be able to maybe get this tier one at top. Yeah, Fear doesn't have his God Strength though. Already used it earlier, and maybe they defend this. No, not with the Nature's Prophet coming in. They'll bring in reinforcements. Oh, Haunt instantly from Eternal Envy, hunting for Fear. He needs one more right click. Can't get the kill in time. The Mech from Universe popped, and the tower still denied by Eternal Envy. Well, well, they do take the tier two bottom during this time. So Cloud9, despite not getting that kill, still having a favorable exchange there. Oh, here comes the oh, Fury. Fata. Oh, there. Fata sprouted. But hey, he's got a heart, man. He's not too afraid of this. Throws out the ghost, the the slow from PPD. He thinks better of it and retreats. And the Doom wow. was used on AUI 2000. He was just worried that oh, we would just blink at any shit on Zai. And so he just immediately doomed him when he saw him. Purely defensive. Here comes the Bone 7 Bat, BOTC, oh, Muscle yeah. Madness. Oh no, here comes the Anti Tinker. Oh That's man, that is, that is hard to dodge if you're RTC. The closing distance of this Bat Rider is absurd. Pylai really Dine might nice be the trade. Pie. Oh, the gem. He's hexed up. The gem. No, oh, nothing he can really do here. He will purge Sphere and then tries to retreat to the left side, but he doesn't have a Bleak Dagger. And so the rock will be thrown out. They really want this gem from Pi. 
Now Fear running shit. back the other nice. direction. Blinks forward, but the Treants are actually blocking him from Universe, and Pi starts to retreat. RTZ now all chatting. And they, they in the end, will still lose the Beastmaster. <laughs> Universe is blocking Fear like crazy there. That was, I was like, oh man, nice tramp block. Oh wait, <laughs> they're on the same team. <laughs> but it works out in the end. Seemed like Bone7 was moving to try and like, maybe they pass off the gem there, but you know, they didn't really have a good time to do it safely. Yeah, he was dead. He was so dead. He doesn't have a blink. No way to escape. After that first stuff on Bone7, Bone7 basically did everything he could to help him. Yeah. Oh no, he has a blink. Oh, he did? Wait, bone what? set. I think I, th you meant uh, pile I die. Did he yeah, pile is a blink. Oh, he had it before the fight. Yeah, yeah before. Yeah, okay. I, I guess he had used it earlier to jump in, and it was just disabled constantly. They're gonna try and get a pick off at bottom. Mass of Menace is off cooldown now. I didn't think they'd try. be able to sustain this long, to be honest. Uh oh, Eternal Envy. Oh, he's spotted out by Zai, but he haunts him anyway. Just to get some vision here, Dagger straight onto Artesian dives. No, not going to dive that just, far. They want to just get on the high ground. That's the only reason he did that. They, they know Furion's not there, so they're just forcing GPD it. GPD almost died to one haunt plus a slim break. Zai turns on this and jumps directly on AUI 2000, brings him low, but hasn't finished him off. Universe has got to do that. They lose the Enigma. Fada also getting killed off quickly inside of the Sprout. Then they, they will be cleared out by Pilotize Axes and Eternal Envy marches forwards. They've brought down three. They're looking for the Tinker here. And Eternal Envy survives. He's still got the Aegis, earns himself up. And they look to break this high ground. No Golem available. Arteezy does have a Hex, but no burst damage having gone for this build. So can't finish off it in these half HP heroes. And Arteezy just, all he can do is try to stall this one. But there is no ultimate from the Death Prophet. No exorcism to bring these racks down quickly. Jeez, he's kind of playing with fire though, They're spamming the mark. The range Rex, I guess. Uh, they kind of won gonna... both. They were they were yeah, hitting okay. the range, They're hitting the melee. Both. This cliff will be popped now. No buybacks on the radiant side, and now they blink in on Arteezy. The black hole has been used, and they lose the tinker. He tried to stall it as long as he could, but eventually just overextends a tiny bit, pays yeah, the that price. Was a die back as that well. was a dieback, yeah. yeah. That's costly. His item progression, he had the Hex at a, a decent time, but there's been nothing since then, and GG. Yes, GG. A very a, odd start to this game, but... That was a really nice, uh, that was a really nice spectral through there to engage that. Because, like, uh, it's it's not the easiest to break the high ground, like, they have to be a little bit careful going up. But if they just do yeah. that, and they pop the, the DP ult, it's completely forced, and there's it was nothing also, EG It was also as helpful for the bat, you know? The, the moment yeah. that happened, everyone was running, because they knew the bat was going to come, and yeah, they were just zoned out of the tower. Yeah, and it, it's that's a dangerous choke point also against Warlock with the with the Golem. It can be scary if you get caught by it. But C9 oh, do a good I'm... job of breaking the base, and they take this game number two to force a. It could be the last game of the WC Grand Finals, or it could just be just the start of the next best of three. And with that being said, guys, of course, I'm LDI. Is joined here by Fog. You can follow him at Fog Dota by Winter at Winter Dota on Twitter, and we'll return very soon for a breakdown of this game. Brittany and Misery, maybe Brax will be back for that. Quakefo hopefully as well, and. Well, after that, go into game three. Stay tuned, you're watching Beyond the Summit.